Welcome everybody to part 12 of my Unity VR guide. Today we'll be learning how to swap from teleportation and continuous movement. We'll learn how to improve our teleportation system from the previous teleporting video. Then we'll learn how to use a UI drop down menu to swap between teleporting and continuous movement. And last, we are going to use a locomotion manager to connect it all together. If you haven't been following this series, no worries. Every part is modular and can be done independently from all the others. Just download the GitHub project provided below, open up the project, and go to the corresponding scene to follow along. If you like a written tutorial, you can also find one in a link below as well. Opening up the project and going to part 12, swapping movement, we will be greeted with this scene. And you'll see down here, we have a teleportation area with a teleportation area script. We also have our rays that are used for teleporting from our teleportation video that we did a while back. We've also kept the UI ray interactors because we're gonna be interacting with this canvas back over here. And one last thing I wanna point out is the locomotion system. And the locomotion system is gonna store the teleportation provider and continuous move provider, which currently that is deactivated for the continuous move provider. But we've left this on for the teleportation provider because, well, we need to add some improvements to our teleportation from last time. And by improvements, I mean I kind of had a bug in our teleportation system. You see, if you teleport around and choose something that's not the teleportation area, you'll actually be able to teleport to that even though you're not supposed to. So what I've done here is I've created a new script called teleportation controller fixed and I didn't just fix the original teleportation controller because that would mess up the previous video. Kind of the problem when you do these part one, part two series. But if we open up the script, let's see what changes I made. And the good news is there's not much to go over here. If we come down to the update, you'll see all I do is I take this raycast hit that we get from this little function call and I go to its collider, its game object and look at its tag and see if it's tagged with teleport. If it isn't, then we exit out and we cancel the teleportation. Otherwise, we teleport like normal. So all we have to do is come back to the editor, go to our teleportation area, come up to the tag and tag it with teleport. And now if we start up the scene, we should be able to see that there we are. We are teleporting only on the teleportation area. And if we try to teleport off it, well, it doesn't work. Now that we fixed this error, Let's learn how to swap between the teleportation provider and the continuous move provider. So starting off, we need a way to do that. And the UI canvas is how we are going to do that. We're going to use something called a drop down menu. So you come down here, go to UI, drop down text mesh pro, and it's going to make it massive. And I'm going to enter some values and I'll tell you what they are in a moment. Okay, so what I've done here is I've set the anchor position to this guy and I've stretched it out. So shift and alt, and then you click this square and that'll push this over this way. And I set this to negative two, but since I clicked that, it set it back to zero. And then I put it at a scale of 0 0.08 and 0 0.08 and one. And so now it looks nice. It fits on our canvas and we can move on to filling out the drop down menu. So in order to do that, we just come down here, drop down Text Mesh Pro, here are our options. And so we can type whatever we want in here. But what we want to type is for the first one, let's have it be teleportation since that is it or teleport, either one works. And the second one, I'm gonna have the continuous movement. And this one I am going to select and then hit the minus. And make sure to select that. If you hit the minus and you have this selected, well, you're gonna kill what you just typed there. And now that we have that in place, we should be able to start up the scene and interact with the UI and just drop it down and click either one. But you'll see the text isn't really lining up correctly. It looks a little sloppy. Let's fix that really quick. So I'm going to come back to the editor. I'm going to go to drop down. And if it's not expanded, you can expand it out, hit label. And this font size, that P is kind of poking out right there. So I'm going to set this to 10 and that's fitting there nicely. But the problem is the drop down itself is not reduced, just this line is right here. So you can go to the template and this is what spawns that drop down, and it populates it when we're clicking this. And we are gonna come over to its label, so item label, and I'm also gonna reduce it to 10. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and just shrink all this. I'm gonna deactivate it again. We can start up the scene and now you'll see when we have that drop down, everything is fitting on its line. It's not overflowing and it looks okay. So what we need now is something that will allow the swapping between these two. And we need that to connect with our drop down menu. And if you look here, we do have a thing that we can use here called on value changed. And what this will do is we can pass it a public function. And then whenever this changes, it's gonna send either a zero representing the first one, so teleport, or one which is gonna be continuous movement. And what we're gonna use is a script that I've already made called Locomotion Manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And it's asking for a left ray teleport and a right ray teleport. So might as well grab those really quickly and put them here. And let's go through the script. And the nice thing about this script is it's pretty simple. So starting off, we have two public game objects. They're going to store our left and right ray teleports, which we will need to deactivate later when we deactivate the teleportation provider here. And speaking of which, yes, we have a teleportation provider and a continuous move provider base, which these are gonna store our different providers that we will enable and disable. And in the start function, we just go out and we grab those two and store it in our variable. And if you come down here, you see public void switch locomotion and it's going to take an integer and this is going to connect to our drop down menu so if you see the locomotion value equals zero then we're going to disable continuous move and enable teleport and then vice versa and if we scroll down we just have very very simple function calls here that just enable or set to active what we need or don't need depending on what it's supposed to do and that's it Coming back to the editor, all we have to do now is connect our locomotion manager script to our dropdown menu and we should be set. So I'm gonna come over to dropdown. I already clicked the plus sign here from earlier, but if this says list is empty, you just hit this and we're gonna drag the locomotion system in here, go to locomotion manager and make sure you do dynamic int. If you do the switch locomotion here, it's gonna leave a zero there and it's just gonna feed it a zero for days. So it will never change even if we change it in game. So again, you come up here, dynamic int, switch locomotion and you'll see that zero is gone. So now if we start up the scene, let's see what we have. All right, and I'm able to teleport around. And then if I go to the UI and switch to continuous move, I am now continuously moving and I can swap back and forth. I think we've done it. And you know what? I have a question for you. We are on part 12. Is this project getting too big? Let me know in the comments so I can figure out if I need to do something else or make a smaller project or series after this video. I appreciate you watching. Take care. Bye-bye.